This tutorial is brought to you by the Department of Performing Arts Technology at the University of Michigan. In this tutorial, we're going to explore how to use the Touch OSC editor to create a custom layout and then upload that layout to your device. So we're going to begin by going to the dock and finding the Touch OSC editor and launching it. This application is a free download from Hexler.net. H-E-X-L-E-R dot net. When the application loads, the first thing we need to do is to decide what device we're creating this layout for. You have a few choices, and I'm going to change my layout size to iPad because I'm going to create this layout for my iPad. So let me make this just a little bit larger so I can see the entire screen. The next thing that we want to do is start adding the actual controls. Now anywhere here in this black area I can right click or control click and the pop-up menu that shows up gives me all of the options for the types of controls that I can create. In this case I'm gonna create a push button and there it is. I'm gonna drag it out from the lower right corner to make it a little bit larger. Just to the right of that I'm going to right click or control click once again and I'm going to add a fader V for vertical. We'll stick that there. We can even resize that a little bit if we want as well. Just to the right of that, I'm going to add one more control by right clicking or control clicking. And this time, I'm going to choose the rotary V, which means rotary vertical. And we'll get that up here and make it a little bit larger. And now I have my three basic controls. The first thing I need to do to make this work is assign some values to each one of these controls. The first value is the name. Now in this case, I could leave the name as push1. This means it's the first push button control that I've added to this layout. If I were to add a second, it would simply call it push2 push 3, and so on. I'm going to leave it as push 1 for now. This name will be important later on, and we'll explore that in the next tutorial. But for the time being, the only thing that I'm really interested in is changing its color, and we will make this push button yellow. And you won't necessarily see that here, because the yellow will only be visible when it's actually being pushed and we're going to leave this value range where it is. So the value range is what range of numbers or values that this particular control sends. In the case of a push button, it's either on or it's off. It's on while it's being pressed, it's off when you lift it up. So I want the value to be 0 to 1. So 0 when it's off, 1 when it's on. And I'm going to move now to the vertical fader that I made. And again, I can change this to be something that's more specific to what I want this particular control to do. But in this particular instance, I'm going to leave it as fader 1. I'm going to change the color to green. And I'm going to go down. And where it says value range 0 to 1, I do need to change this. So my plan for this fader is to have it control volume to a MIDI instrument. So 0 is right, but I need to change the 1 to 127. The next thing I need to look at for this particular control is the inverted button. If you notice right now, the knob or the handle of this control is at the top not where I would expect to find the zero mark. So by clicking the box inverted, you'll notice that the handle moves to the bottom of the control, which is where I would expect to see a fader's knob when it's zeroed out. And I'm going to now move over to the rotary knob, the vertical. And again, I can change the name. I'm going to leave it alone for this case. And I'm going to change its color to orange. I'm going to go down here to the value range and I have a few things to set up here. 
Now my intention for this particular control is that it's going to control the panning of this particular drum instrument. So the panning values that I need to send are negative 63 all the way to the left to 64 all the way to the right. And I want to center this control because I want the control, the knob, to start here in the middle. Now we don't see that here, but we will when we upload it to our device. And that's really it. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some labels to each one of these controls so that I can remember what this was all about, what I was doing with these things. So again, underneath my push button, I'm going to right click or control click, and I'm going to choose, in this case, a horizontal label, the label H. And here's my label. I'm going to choose the text for the label. I don't want it to say label 1. And I'm going to call this snare. So we'll just assume that I'm going to trigger a snare sound. I can change the size of the text if I want. Maybe I want it a little bit larger. I can even change the color of the text. So if I'd like to make it match, I can do that as well. And I'm going to do that one more time here for the fader. And I'm going to call this volume. I'm going to change that to the same size and make it green so that it matches the control. And then one more time under the rotary. And again, I'm just going to do the very same things. I'm going to call this pan, change the text size a little bit, and change its color to orange. And there we go. The next step is going to be uploading this layout to my device. Now, before we do that, we want to save this document. If we don't save the document, this layout will actually be uploaded to my device with the name of Untitled 1. And that won't make a whole lot of sense once I have several layouts uploaded to my device. So I'm going to hit the Save button, and I'm going to call this Drums. I'm going to leave it on my desktop and just hit Save. And there it is. Now I'm ready to sync. I'm going to go to the top and choose the sync button. It's located right here with this green arrow. Press it one time and Touch OSC Editor is going to give us a couple of very simple instructions. And if you follow these, you'll be able to upload this new layout to your device. The first step is to make sure your iPod or iPhone, or in my case, my iPad, is connected to the same Wi-Fi network as my computer, and it is. The next step is to launch Touch OSC, if it's not already launched on your device, and go to Settings, which you'll find on your device right underneath this little lowercase i. Find the Layout, and then touch Add. When you touch Add, the next thing that happens is your machine's name will show up in a list and you simply touch the name of your computer, your machine, and that this layout that we've just created will be uploaded automatically to Touch OSC, where you'll be able to use it as often as you like. In the next tutorial, we're going to explore how to assign these controls to your software.